In this video I'll be explaining how I made this horse, which is game ready, fully rigged, fully textured, and it's surprisingly quick to make. This process will work with most animals and you'll come out with similar results to what I've got here. The video is aimed at a beginner to intermediate level, so I'm giving a lot of explanation about the tools but not going into a lot of depth. For most of the processes I've got a more detailed video, so I'll be linking to those as they come up. This video is made possible by the sponsors of this channel, Nvidia and PC Specialist. You can clearly see here how much difference my RTX 3090 card is making as I reposition the camera. And this is in cycles and it's practically rendering my model almost in real time with their RT cores and AI tensor cores. It means I can make changes, pose my model, play with the lighting, and in the end, produce better quality and faster renders. PC Specialist are an NVIDIA Studio partner and leading system builders, selling a range of customizable PCs that perform amazingly with Blender. They specialize in custom PCs and laptops for creators and gamers. So configure your next NVIDIA RTX system using PC Specialist Online Configurator today. So let's take you through the process. So the first thing I did was find some references and pull those in. Obviously you want a nice side view of your animal and a front view if you can find one and a back view would help if you need it. Check the link in the description and the card in the corner for how to insert background images. I used the default cube to just line them up so I know their ears and their sort of bottom of the chest was in the same place but it didn't matter too much, they weren't particularly accurate. They're mainly just there as a guide. Then I start with a plane, move that into position, go into edit mode and start editing the vertices and basically trace around my horse. Check out my how to make a low poly animal video for a much more in-depth tutorial. I'm trying to, where the shape changes drastically, add in a new loop cut, but try not to end up with too many really thin lines of loop cuts. Try and keep it fairly even topology throughout. I create a bit of extra topology around the leg because I know there's going to be movement around there, but you don't have to worry too much with a low poly horse, you can get away with quite a lot. Do make sure that you don't add too many polygons at this point, we add more later on as the complexity grows. At this point I've got to bulk it out somehow, so I move it across to the side, that's in edit mode with my origin point still in the middle there, and then I extrude it out and add a mirror. Make sure that you've applied your rotation and your scale so you don't get any confusing mirror results. And remember it mirrors around that origin point in the center. I'll delete the faces in the middle. And now it's a case of kind of smoothing out your mesh and adding some topology where you need it. So I've kind of got a line down the middle and I squeeze in the neck and head, create an area for the legs to come out and start thinking about the view from the front and getting the right width of the horse. This is probably the toughest bit, that's why I would say this is an intermediate type of tutorial. If you're struggling, just try and keep the shape as simple as possible, don't add too many polygons. You may end up with a bit of a simpler horse, but at least you'll end up finishing. A handy tip is to go into sculpt mode and just use the grab brush to pull the mesh around. And you can use the smooth brush to smooth things out by holding down shift. I think it's much easier to get the right shape with the grab brush and it's much more sort of fluent and easy to manage. Do keep checking that your shape meets with the side reference. The side reference is the one you'll be using the most, so make sure you've found a good reference for that. At this point, I grab the faces and pull out the legs. And you can just select a few faces, just make sure that it lines up with the legs and then keep extruding, trying again to match that shape where you can. Watch out from front view, I was going off at an angle and didn't realize. And make sure you're moving around your object so it's easy to see that they're lining up correctly. I'm not worrying too much about the topology or trying to match the shape perfectly. I'm just trying to get reasonably close, so pulling around the vertices so they match the shape of the side reference. I've slowed this bit down so you can see exactly what I'm doing with this leg. I actually move the verts around a little bit and I select some faces and inset them first. That gives me a tiny bit extra topology, so when I extrude this out, you can see that I've got four faces there which means I can round out the leg later on because of those extra edges. If you're more of a beginner, then don't worry too much about this. You can keep it really low poly and just extrude one or two faces out and you don't have to worry about the roundness too much. You can see once again, I didn't check my front view so it went off at an angle. And you might have to thicken out the legs a little bit as well. The back legs of this horse are very thin, so just make sure that uh, you do check it from different angles and not just keep in side view. And you can see what I mean by having that extra topology. I can select those edge loops going up and down the leg and just round them out slightly and give them a bit of curve. So ideally you want four faces that you extrude those legs out with. 
You can see here that I'm doing a bit of topology tidy up. It doesn't matter too much. You can get away with an awful lot. It does help it animate better if you have a bit of extra topology around the joints where you're going to see bend. That should help minimize any pinching. Now with the head, it's fairly simple at the moment and you can get away with that, but I thought I'd add in an eye shape just so I could move it around and create a little bit more structure around there. But you don't actually have to. You can get away with an awful lot when you use the texture painting stencil process later on. For the ears, you want to find a face that's close to where they are and then inset it and then reshape that face to the base of the ear and then extrude them out. At this point, it's just me going around tidying a few things up, trying to minimize any triangles. But again, it doesn't matter too much. You can have triangles in your game objects or animated objects. It doesn't matter too much. Just try and make sure the topology is fairly even. That will help when it does come to rigging it and animating it. Again, it does help to keep your mesh nice and simple so don't add too much topology or thin loop cuts next to each other as that can be a bit of a pain to try and model with. So at this point, I go across to the UV editing workspace and move around my object marking some seams. You can use an automatic unwrap at this point. It's much easier. So if you're a beginner, just do that because the texture painting process is pretty good and you won't see any seams. It's also okay to tidy up some of your mesh here. You can see that my hoof was a little bit out, so I just tidy that up a bit. The advantage of manually marking the seams like I am is that you end up with less islands and therefore you get more texture space for your objects and you get less chance of overlap. Here, I just do a quick check to see whether there's any overlap. So select and then select overlap and it says there's some overlap there. So I select that space, find out where it is and it's the ears which I haven't unwrapped properly. So that's a really useful tip. Select overlap so you can see if there's any UVs overlapping each other which won't unwrap properly. So at this point, I go to island select mode with the UV map in full screen and start moving them about and resizing them a bit to make the most of my UV space. Then it's across to texture painting. If you want to know how to do texture painting, then make sure you check out my tutorials on that. I've got a beginner's guide and one about using stencils, which is the most important in this case. So first of all, I add a new material to my object and now I'm adding a new texture so I can paint on. Then I go across to the paint tools where it says texture and add in my side view of the horse. I'm going to use that as a stencil to paint the horse. Under the texture tools, you can see I've turned my mapping to stencil. I resize it and you can move the stencil with right click, resize with shift and right click and rotate with control and right click. Now I notice it's not painting properly, so I check the face normals and that's under the overlays. If it's red, then you've got a problem and that's why I wasn't able to paint. So now I can start painting once I've reversed those normals so they're pointing the right way. And you can see I'm just using that stencil, going around and painting the color on. I change the shading to smooth shading and go into material preview mode. That makes it much easier to see what I'm doing. Also, it helps to turn down the roughness. I do that at a later stage, but I should have done that here. And now I just use different parts of the stencil on the horse, trying to match it up as best as I can. But you can see I'm moving it around as I have to, to try and paint certain bits with, let's say, the leg of the horse for some of the face. It doesn't matter too much, just as long as it works. And we tidy it up a bit later on. At this stage, we're being quite rough and some of the colors won't match quite, but try where you can to use a leg for a leg and the torso for the torso. But what I do next is use the clone brush. You press control click and that moves your 3D cursor and you clone that area onto another area. And I'm using that just to tidy up around the place. So control click will move that 3D cursor and that's where I'm cloning from. Now the texture painting part here is obviously key to making it look fairly realistic. It's possibly more important than the actual topology unless you're keen to get really good animations. So you might want to spend a fair bit of time making sure this is all nice, clean and clear. I tend to jump between the stencil and the clone brush quite a lot to try and make it look nice and clean. You can still get away with a fair bit. It looks reasonably realistic, the final result, even though I've been fairly rough. Once you're happy with your image, make sure you've saved your work. For this next part, I use an add-on called Rigify, so make sure that's enabled. And then you can go to the armature and add in a horse armature line that up with your model and it helps to go to viewport display and turn it to in front to make sure you can see your bones. I line them up in object mode first to make sure that it's roughly in the right place. Then a little later I go into edit mode and start editing the bones. Now for the mane and the tail I used hair cards and actually the mane didn't turn out very good and I didn't include it in the final render. But I think possibly with better hair cards, maybe a bit more experience on this, I could have done a better job. 
I used a program called Fibershop to create the hair cards. You can see that there's a simple color and alpha. The alpha is the bit that makes it transparent, so tells Blender which bits to not show. And I just put this onto a basic plane and moved it into position. It worked okay for the tail, I think, but for the main, it wasn't particularly good. Hair cards are commonly used in games because of their low poly count, but they are really fiddly and they take a lot of work to get right. The program Fibershop was really good, but I was using the sort of free version, which only allowed me to export with a color and the alpha. I think with a normal map, it would have looked a lot better. But this was one of my first times using hair cards, so perhaps a bit more experience would help as well. And you can see the tail there kind of working anyway. And remember, you can go into edit mode with lots of objects and use proportional edit, and that, like I say, kind of worked as well. The main here, you can see me working on that now, and I'm trying to sort of push it across to the side. But it just didn't really look that great. Again, maybe the hair cards and the quality of those, maybe my lack of experience didn't really help either. It's possibly also the fact that the hair isn't quite matching the texture of the horse either, which was a little bit awkward. But I won't give up on the hair cards, I'll try again with another creature at some point. So back to my horse rigify rig, obviously I needed to do the hair first before applying the rig. And I need to edit the shape of the rig as well, so I start moving that into position. Make sure you've got X symmetry on, which is in the top right hand corner. You do have to be a little bit careful when you're editing Rigify rigs because some bones have to be joined together so if you start moving bones around just make sure you don't detach bones from each other. Once I'm happy that everything's in position then you can use the Generate Rig option and that sorts out all the IK and things like that for you. Make sure with all your objects you've applied their transforms and scales so that's Control A and then you can parent the mesh to the rig with automatic weights and you've got this lovely horse rig to play with and move around. So there it is, the final model and it's all rigged and ready to go and you can see it's a pretty good rig straight out of the box with no weight painting at all. It's doing a great job and it's really fun to play with and I'll turn my overlays off and you can see the final result there and it looks pretty decent. And as I've said before, this is me moving around whilst in cycles. That's thanks to the RTX 3090. And it's almost like I'm rendering in real time, but in cycles with all that realistic lighting and quality. So I hope you enjoyed the video. Do leave a comment below with your thoughts. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.